welcome to episode 175. That's a lot of episodes for a it little is. podcast like ourselves, but that's okay. Well, uh, we're we, coming uh, up on our on our anniversary, like first week of February is like well, right. when we started. You're, you're right. It's so, the 23rd uh, today. So yeah, we've got uh, two weeks uh, before, well, roughly two weeks, where we'll yeah. be celebrating our uh, uh two three three no is it four sorry 2015 to 16 to 17 to 18 to 19. what no no like, it's not five well, we didn't did we start in 2015 we did yeah well, all right it's, it's our fifth year what I'm, i i i okay okay yeah. Let's let's double check this because I will tell you exactly when we started because I know exactly when we did because it's all in the data. So uh, our very first episode, um, which was uh, let me think. Here we go. Uh, blah 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 blah. I gotta go all the way to the end. Sorry, bear with me. Uh, we've got episode one dropped. Excuse me. It dropped on. <laughs> do do just. I'm sorry. I'm still going backwards. I'm uh, I'm in 2015 now. Here we go. Episode one. Uh, yeah, February 2015. Wow, my mind has been blown. So there you go. 2015 is. Wow. Is it really five years? So we had like. No, that's four. 2019 minus 2015. Do the math. Break this down for me, Dave. Well, okay, so February 2015, right? Yeah. Yes. So we can count that as a year. 16, 17, 18. Mm, we haven't gone through 19. So no, Alan's right. It's four years. It's got to be four years. What? No, no way. I, I right. fake, fake news. Fake okay, news. So, <laughs> so we can't, okay, so the only thing we've proved here is that you that we cannot do math. So, we are, we are <laughs> maybe we should just brutal. stick to drinking beer. Uh, so well, what hey, we I here? am not going to argue with that point. Uh, this is actually a beer chosen by Dave. Dave, tell him about how we chose this beer uh, yesterday. Or the day before it was i think it was the day before uh yeah so i decided that i was going to pop into my uh local boozeteria and grab the brew because i thought it might be easier to do this and i thought oh i'm gonna make it even easier i'm going to phone shane so shane says oh yeah i'm just bopping around town here let me get my car a car shane no longer owns a car but he likes mm -hmm. to use other people's cars so let That's me just right. get a uh, car. He's, he's like yeah totally and i'm like and off i went yeah totally it's hey it's, it's how how we roll here by the way uh the guy who parked his lamborghini on the corner of 10th and <laughs> maple uh your car is located currently at the brewery creek brew store at uh, beer store at uh, the uh, whatever 15th and shane main shane when yeah. you when you broke the window when you punched through the windshield were you high on pcp probably broke every bone in your hand wouldn't feel it for hours there you was see this, this guy scar with... <laughs> 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 um, Great. continue dave continue all right dave go right so i uh, had to wait for shane to get to his local boozeteria where he figured he had a good chance of or better chance of getting something so i am pretty sure that he and i spent a solid half an hour on the phone together yeah, and did. uh i believe we went through what are you gonna what are you gonna go with here shane seven brews uh at least we um, found... I, we went I through how sound we went number. through yeah we it was a while it was a while yeah it, it took some doing and so what did you end up with we ended up with a field house nice uh, bottle this time and i felt pretty comfy with it uh because yeah apparently it's right here the i don't old really hand worry about things flat white yes. oatmeal stout nice. it is a limited release which explains potentially why alan couldn't find it although mm. you said you saw it the week before i did um, 
Yeah. It so does when smell we, good. So when we were when we were uh, looking for last week's beer, I actually saw that one and left it in the back of my mind. I'm like, oh, hey, that looks good. And we've been wanting to do Field House. And uh, so then I saw Dave had picked it this week. I was like, oh, awesome. So I went back to all those places. It's gone. So, so I was unable to get it. But I'm interested to hear what you guys have to say about it. What beer did you get, Alan? Well, I ended up um, going with, uh, completely off the rails, as it were, and <laughs> got something from off the rail. Uh, their old Winston smoked porter. Oh, which is uh, interesting. There's a label there of a, a dog, a bulldog, smoking a cigar on a an old uh, chair. Um, yeah, sounds very interesting. Look at that head! Look at that head! Look at it! That is amazing. It's big stuff. Yeah. Wow. Now, now this beer, uh, uh, of course, too. we we uh, picked it up uh, completely randomly here. Uh, beer and coffee share an attention to craft like few other industries. We partnered with our neighborhood friends at Old Hand Coffee to bring you this flat white inspired brew. An oatmeal oh, stout God. base is rounded out with lactose and vanilla, then conditioned on whole coffee beans while sacrificing a virgin at the very end of the brew cycle. Um, we believe that good beer it actually good... says that. No, no. Uh, we believe that good beers and good times go hand in hand, and the real goodness comes from the gathering of good company. Our beers are meant to be enjoyed with friends. Uh, they are carefully crafted, drink bleh, classic, drinkable styles infused with fresh ideas and innovation. This is, of course, a small batch now. Uh, 765 milliliters at 7% with 22 on the international beer unit scale. And of course, uh, their classic little fox is up there at the very top of the label. Um, Fieldhouse, of course, is out in Abbotsford, which is about 900 miles that way, uh, or at least it may as well be. Um, I know that Dave has had a lot of experience driving out to, uh, to, uh, to that rough area of the world yeah. actually not even that f actually it's not even that far it's um, not it's, actually it's... he's a, he's actually only driving about halfway there so it, it's 450 miles isn't it dave uh i think it's more like 475 but you know ballpark yeah about that you know yeah. totally yeah. but uh i think we've have we ever done field house Ever? No, we have not. We've been itching to do it, but we can never find a week where we can all get it. Um, and again, and again, <laughs> the that, curse continues. I, I mean, in in most cases, Shane, you were completely unable to get anything from Fieldhouse. That's and true. So, I mean, I could have gotten something else from Fieldhouse if I really wanted to. I but could have gotten else came this. close to what mm -hmm. you guys were having. So, uh, I opted to go with something, a, a different uh, company. So, Fieldhouse Brewing, uh, what do we know about them, Alan or Dave? Anybody? Um, nothing except that they are in Abbotsford, and I would be curious to actually go and see their operation. Okay. Sure they've got a tasting room One stuff. thing that's interesting about them, and I don't know if this has anything to do with um, specifically with Fieldhouse, but there was a, a beer that they had out a while back uh, called their uh, Salted um, Salted Porter. It comes in a smaller bottle. It's less than five bucks to buy it. Um, what I found was interesting is while I was doing a search online to find out where I could buy it, I came across uh, a website. I kind of wonder if I still have it here in my phone uh, for a home brewing place that actually sells a kit that makes the field house salted porter um, uh, beer, like really branding and everything. And you can make it at home, which I thought was kind of interesting. Now I don't, so I don't know if that's. I would imagine that's done in partnership with uh, with uh, uh, Fieldhouse, uh, but I'm not sure. Yeah, here it is. Here from Gold uh, uh, Goldsteam.com. It's the Fieldhouse 
uh, salted black porter all grain beer kit. It's thirty one ninety nine, uh, and it yields approximately forty five hundred mil bottles of uh, of beer, and it includes everything that's in the field house. It actually has a picture of the field house bottle on the box. Oh. Hmm. Okay, that looks oh. cool. Which is interesting. I, I want. You should try it, Shane. So, I think... Uh, I think that we should make a, uh, a trip out there. Okay. I think we All should... All 900 miles? Yeah. 900 okay. miles. It's not that's not right. that far. All right. It's actually not 900 miles, you know. It's only 849. That's true. It is it's 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 just shy of 900. Uh, we're not yeah. lying at all. Um but let's talk about some beer news this week that we sure. find very interesting. The first so one you, is So do you guys like the beer then? Is this Oh this yeah, is? sorry. Well, we're drinking it. We haven't poured it out. No, I'm actually enjoying this one a lot. Um, I don't quite understand how the oatmeal part works into it because uh, I don't really sense the, you know, when you get when you when you drink something that has, that's had oatmeal as a uh, as a uh, uh, what's what's the word a a thing a, a base when you put it in. Um, I'm missing that, but maybe it could be that the the coffee is overpowering it. So I tend to get when I have beer that has oatmeal in it, I tend to get that sort of. Uh, the coating in your mouth that you that kind of tasty, right. you know, like oatmeal. But is is um, the coffee really bold? Like, can you? Yeah, really taste. Yeah. yeah, it's very very strong. So wow. I think it's overpowering the adjunct of the of the oatmeal. But you know what? I'm good with that, it. It's good that, anyway. That's fine, Dave. How are you liking it? I'm finding it um, quite smooth, actually. Okay. So I guess you would expect that from a porter, wouldn't you? They tend to be a little yes. smoother. Um, there's a little bit of bitterness, uh, a little more than I like in my beers. Right. Uh, but you kind of get used to it after, after you've had it a little bit too. So I would have to say, I like this one. I don't know if I would buy it left mm -hmm. to my own devices again. Now that that's a bit of an expensive beer, isn't it? I mean, comparative to other bombers, and does it run about ten bucks a bottle? Uh, I think that's about right. I don't remember. Do you remember Shane what you paid? Uh, too much. Uh, it was ten something. Ten. Um, yeah. Okay. Ten yeah. seventy. I think it was about a, it was roughly a dollar more than I paid than you paid. So, mm. um, but again, the place that I had to go get it. Uh, tends to be a bit pricier anyway, so mm. it's not like I didn't expect it to be more expensive. Because the problem is, um, I didn't go to the store that particular store to uh, get this particular beer. I went there because they have a wide selection. They are convenient to get to. They have a parking lot. Uh, the other place that I usually go to, Legacy, it's hard to park there because there's all these street parking. Um, so I just decided I was going to go to the easy place. So, um, it probably at legacy is probably slightly cheaper. Um, uh, but of course you can't beat the prices at the BC liquor store most of the time. So, uh, usually I tend to default to that. Um, yeah. So I think that, uh, it is time for us to discuss the awesomeness that is Japan. Japan, for 14 years running, their beer shipments have dropped and dropped and dropped and hmm. dropped. Hmm. And here's the thing. I've done a little searching on this. No one seems to know why. No one. It's like, well, you know, it's been a long time since we've, you know, and I'm thinking, what are they drinking instead of beer? It gets hot there in the summer. It gets cold there in the winter. You got winter beers. You've got summer beers. What's going on? So, so what are we saying? Are we saying the J J Japanese people are drinking less beer? 
or that they're shipping out less beer to North they're they're America. shipping out less beer uh they apparently have dropped uh another 2.5 percent this year uh mm. since uh 2018 so but again uh if you do the if you search around a little bit about japan and, and uh you know shipping beer they no one seems to know why it's kind of like no one seems well, to have gone because... out on the street and said hey uh we noticed you left that restaurant did you have a beer in here in there no well why not like they, it's like nothing's going no one seems to know. just it's yeah it's weird it's a very strange story but i thought it might be interesting uh because dave uh you know you probably know the reason oh for sure <clears throat> so why is the re what's the reason with japan not shipping out enough beer uh well, it involves aliens from the planet nubal north God, you know those Nubal Norfians, they just annoy me. Why do they always land in Japan? They're always I, taking our jobs. I <laughs> those, those aliens. <laughs> those aliens are taking the jobs. I just want to say, anyway, never mind. Um, well, if you're an employer, don't you want somebody with six legs and four arms? Like, hey. He's got a, nip, a nipple. <laughs> no, <he's> got a... <laughs> What's that song? Uh, the Purple People Eater. Anyway, yeah. Never mind. Moving along, moving along. Uh, move along, move along. Here we are. Now, here's the other thing. Uh, I really want Vancouver to hit 45 degrees in temperature because there's an Australian <laughs> pub that's giving away free beer when the temperature hits 45 degrees degrees so what do you Could guys you think is this, is this a, is this degree just, weather i well, i think so yeah i mean not very well but i don't think it would kill you like could you even a... walk to the pub if there's if it's 45 degrees <laughs> maybe maybe this, maybe this is the hook right it's like oh yeah free beer if it hits 45 degrees but you won't be able to get there because you'll be like completely you, like you'll be a puddle like heat exhaust heat exhaustion or whatever so basically you go, I'm going to go get a beer and you just die on the way there. Mm -hmm. um, this pub is located in uh, Adelaide, which is a town uh, that's that. Where am I? Uh, that way, that direction mm -hmm. um, in Southern Australia, uh, specifically in actually, that's what it's called. South Australia is the state. Uh, but, uh, yeah, it's apparently getting a lot of attention in Australia because of this be and, and other pubs apparently are threatening to do a very same thing. Um, is this a sustainable choice? <laughs> yeah, it's fine. I mean, it's just, it's a gimmick. It's probably not going to hit 45 degrees. That's why they're doing it. Right. Well, it, this, th they're th getting a lot of free publicity over, uh, uh a th something that in is Canada. never going to happen. They're never going to cash out on it. Well, I'm going to point out to you that if you do a Google search on Google Maps right now for this particular hotel, uh, Google has this tracking ability where uh, the businesses and people leaving uh, uh, comments on business listings uh, actually have a, uh, you can actually keep track or give you a rough idea of how busy you are at any time. And my favorite thing is that right now it's it's uh, what four almost five p.m. There, there's a huge spike in the amount of traffic, and the comment on the system is a lot more people than usual. <laughs> so now, now, I'm going to do weather, Australia, Adelaide. I, I, I could be pronouncing that wrong, by the way. Um, here we are. Uh, 46 degrees at this very moment in time. What? There you go. Oh, That's wow. why they're getting swamped at 46 degrees uh, at 5 o'clock in the evening. And apparently there's wow. far more people than they usually get. So, you know, uh, yeah, it's a gimmick. Yeah, it's a good idea. But I don't know. Could a pub go broke in a day? Probably not. But uh, what is, yeah, what is 45 degrees in Fahrenheit? Uh, 45 fair, degrees uh, oh. in Fahrenheit? No, that's in Celsius. What, uh, uh, in Fahrenheit, it is 113 degrees. Holy crap! So, um, speaking of speak, actually, question for you two mm. do you guys think in Fahrenheit or in Celsius? Celsius, Celsius, yeah, same here. 
Um, I can't. I had this. I had this discussion uh, on the weekend with my mother about uh, when. I guess it was the mid. I want to say it was the late seventies or the mid eighties where they where we, Canada officially went uh, to um, the metric system. I think it was um, mid seventies. And uh, yeah, because I I do have a vague memory of actually trying to learn the metric system back then, uh, but I don't think I understood Fahrenheit either. So I don't know. But I still think in that. I although, remember all the commercials that were on TV. Really. Uh, at the time, encouraging people to embrace the metric system. Really? Oh. Yeah. I even remember the logo. The logo had like this weird sort of like a, an M, but it looked kind of like a bit of a star. Hmm. It was, it was, I, I remember I would, you know what, if I saw one of those commercials again, I'd probably recognize it. Yeah, here you go. Canadian metric conversion PSA on the CBC in 1975. Oh, wow. Wow. There you go. I don't know. Uh, to be honest, uh, if, you watch Star Trek, if, if you uh, if you if you go to uh, if you watch Star Trek, uh, Star Trek's in metric. So um, and I remember there's this weird episode uh, where uh, Picard kept kept telling the helmsman, whoever the helmsman was during this episode, about going to a certain KPH. Mm. Give me 200 KPH. Give me and make it so. You know, that kind of, it was like weird. And I don't recall any other episode mm. in any Star Trek series back then doing that ever. So uh, it always stuck in my mind as being a bit odd. But mm. uh, maybe, maybe they, uh, maybe they recently, the writer recently converted to uh, the metric system. Um, so, so, so I just watched that commercial. I was like, Holy crap, I can't believe I remembered that logo <laughs> from like 1975. Like I was three. <laughs> wow. The memory does very strange things, especially when you make an Imperial Red Ale called Isis. Oh. So Hell, there I is an article Isis. today about a, uh, a company uh, called, and I'm going to screw this up, uh, called caracale um i'm sure that that's not how it's pronounced but essentially it's a beer craft beer uh, brewery in jordan now if you know much jordan about Duke. the middle east in jordan jordan fitzpatrick <laughs> um in jordan uh my my from what i understand from this article is that uh, a country that is 95 percent muslim doesn't necessarily have a very large beer consuming uh, audience. So, but anyway, they have been trying, they've actually not been trying. They finally have broken into the North American market, specifically in the United States. Um, and they are, they're making a whole bunch of beers. Uh, they've, they've made a pale, a blonde, an imperial, uh, and they also have a, a sour and a, I believe it's a wheat of some sort that has one of the coolest labels I've ever seen. But their Imperial Red jumps out at you because they have Arabic characters uh, that are lined up so that English speakers see the word ISIS. Um, I don't know. I, I guess that's okay. Um I don't really care, but I, some people might think that's ridiculous and, and kind of in poor taste, but, uh, you know, mm. okay. I'm looking at it now. I, I don't know if I ne necessarily take ISIS from it. It almost really? looks almost like Usis. Uh, I, I guess, but sure. Um, Dave, what do you see in the characters on that middle beer? Um, I do see an Isis, definitely, but you could easily make the case for uh, Alan's take on it too, because it looks it looks actually to me it looks more like a J. Mm. Well, right. you Who's are this? both entirely insane people, and I will have you committed at the earliest convenience. Nice. Uh, <laughs> um, 
but essentially, yeah, I mean, this is actually uh, 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 the brewer calls himself uh, the ultimate in counterculture because he's doing something that's really in the face of the majority of the country. Um, Quite frankly, it's illegal in some places, actually, over there. Well, yeah, really this is true. Um, but also it's completely uh, the illegal thing... in Saudi. Absolutely. In oh, fact, yeah. it might even be a death penalty if you were to do what he's doing in Saudi. Okay, let's see. So, uh, how alcohol... do you be driving the wrong way down a one way street in Saudi? It's a death penalty. So, alcohol in Saudi Arabia sideways. Um, list of countries with alcohol prohibition. So, uh, here we are Afghanistan, Bangladesh, Brunei, India, which uh, has a prohibition in certain areas of the country, uh, Indonesia, Iran, Kuwait. Um, although in Iran and Kuwait, uh, or sorry, in Iran and Indonesia, uh, if you're not a Muslim, then it's okay. Um, the Maldives, unless you're not Muslim, Mauritania, Malaysia, a bunch of places where if you're not Muslim, it's okay. Saudi Arabia, Somalia, Sri Lanka, Sudan, United Arab Emirates. Um, but that's only one region and Yemen. So Jordan is not on this list now. Jordan, I guess, does not have any opinion about alcohol, but uh, there you are. So I don't know if you guys, if if tomorrow Canada decided that's it, we're done, no more booze. Um, <laughs> would, what would happen? Would we basically change governments overnight because everyone would be so incredibly irate yes. and yeah, then loaded that they'd storm the capital? Yes, that's exactly what would happen. But it would never happen because Molson would never allow it. Yeah, that's a good point. But if they made it illegal to consume but not to brew, hmm. Well, if still Molson would because okay, so they can brew beer. If nobody can drink it, nobody's going to buy it. So. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't know. I mean, I can see that. Here, here's the thing. Every time you see some sort of documentary about a country in the Middle East, they inevitably will do one of two things. They will find the places that you can go to consume alcohol under the radar. Um, and uh, I remember in a particular documentary about gay men in Iraq. And mm -hmm. they, and, but here's the kicker. The people they were interviewing were two men that were gay, but they also ran an underground gay club. And I don't know. It, it, that to me is an incredibly dangerous game. And I have to say, good job. Please don't die. And, uh, you know, but again, maybe I'm just a, just a disturber of the peace. Mm. Maybe you are. I can vouch for that. Yeah. So, so basically, if Canada decided tomorrow that we are not going to have beer in this country anymore, uh, would you, us three, be in Ottawa overnight to raise some help. I think we would be like Che Guerrera, you know, or Che, you know, whatever. Che Guevara. Yeah. That guy. Like, yeah, that guy. We're gonna like lead the charge and the rebellion against <laughs> against the evil oppressors. <laughs> A you know. existence is no existence at all. That's right. So basically, oh, we would have to be change, like an army uh, of beer gutted, uh, uh, <laughs> bald men, middle aged men <laughs> storming the capital. We want our beer. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, it was like, let's charge. And everybody's like, oh, out of breath. I can't move. <laughs> it is a period of civil war. Drunken, <laughs> drunken cars filled with drunken Canadians strike from a hidden base, and they have won their first victory against the evil prohibitionists of Ottawa. During the battle, drunken spies managed to steal, quite accidentally, the plans to a new brewery, the, the ultimate weapon, the death brew. An armored brewery station with enough power to destroy an entire liver. Pursued Boston. Awesome. <laughs> so, okay, so if we do open up our own brewery, it's got to be that. And, and everybody dresses like imperial officers 
and we have like the lighting. Thing. We, we would be open for business for like three days, and then suddenly, you know, a guy dressed up in a mouse suit walks in and goes, "Ha! Ah, here's your shoes and business letter." <laughs> and how we get customers is we create a tractor beam. And as they walk by the brewery, we, we pull them in with the tractor beam. <laughs> wow. You know, I, I do believe that uh, it would be like watching a Bugs Bunny Roadrunner movie. Um, because that's just, that's the quality that I think we, us three, if we were intoxicated, <laughs> would actually be able to pull off. Um, pretty much wow so um <laughs> <laughs> on that note uh you know it is it's about half an hour so uh is we've it? promised we have promised to be shorter these days just like dave who's shorter than all of us no burn why how much <laughs> uh i think what half an inch um so uh thank you all for watching thank you for coming by uh we had a few viewers on i don't know who you are but i i worship you like there's no tomorrow yeah. and uh so basically uh we'll see you all next week for our next beer and uh of course follow us on all these social media stuff uh subscribe to the channel because you know you have to ask that because if you don't then how would you know what to do yeah. because what's the point down at the not... bottom of the screen oh sorry <clears throat> hang on i gotta do, do this. i gotta do i gotta do right <clears throat> so down here and over here and up here make sure to press that subscribe button and also don't forget to click that bell Bing! because if you don't then apparently you can't look for our channel or bookmark it or anything because apparently people are dumb i don't know I, think, I, 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 I i assume that anyone watching this channel must really be bored and has found their way here on their own without yeah. any of this. So, uh, but there you go. So thank you all for watching again. And uh, as always, Alan, please 